Hello, and welcome back to XP Waste, where it takes Michael longer to fix his hair than it does for most people to do the Inferno. Hi, I'm Oxy. And I'm Michael. He's mad about Thanks, Oxy. He, he's mad about that one. I made fun of him for his hair once already. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm getting a haircut this week, so by the n- next time you actually see us, I'll have a haircut. Finger, but. fingers crossed for the fun question. He puts his hair straight down like a 2005 emo boy. Yeah, you guys just have to wait and yeah, see. We'll see. Welcome. If you are new around here, this is your first time listening. We are XP Waste Podcast. Every week we'll discuss new things happening in RuneScape. If we have any news to talk about uh, today, we're going to talk about some things that's not news. So stick around for that. But uh, yeah, if you're new around here, hello. If you're not new around here, hello. That's all I got to say. Yeah, good, uh, good jump, good summary. I, I take that. I take that. <laughs> yeah, you kind of sold the the main title content a little short this week, though. I'm actually super excited. Oh. I'm super excited about this week. Did any before we get into it? Did anything interesting happen this week for either one of us, like in game? This isn't like a sarcastic question. I genuinely want to know because I don't remember. Right now, currently, as it stands, I am 129 XP away from 99 smithing. And I've just been holding off for when I see a bunch of people online and just like go over to Thurco or whatever his name is and get 99 smithing with, with everybody. Yeah, make it happen, dude. No huge rush. I actually may get 99 fire making before that actually happens. I'm 95 right now. So I, I, would, lo- we'll I would love that. Accidentally get 199 while waiting for another 99. <laughs> I'll get 99 fire making and 99 smithing in the same tick. Can you do that? I'll make a dart and start a fire. Is there a way oh, wait, that you could... Oh, wait, that's fletching. No, nah, never mind. You could... Well, oh, you I could, can like... superheat something. That's magic. No, 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 superheat. Yeah, I know. You get smithing you XP. You get a little bit of smithing XP, but like... How, yeah. do you, how are you going to do fire making? I'll superheat some gold and in the same tick make a fire. Yeah, so no, you'll light the fire, and then like you know how you can set it up to like light a fire the next time, set yeah. it up to cast the spell as soon as you finish lighting the fire, so you'll get both fireworks at the same time. That'll actually be pretty awesome. I, I really that'd be a ninety nine party. I would love to see right there. Let's do yeah. it. And if I'm really impatient, I could just wait until I also have ninety nine thieving queued up, because those are my my three that I'm getting before I go back to work mm-hmm. is <laughs> pickpocket somebody then cast or make a fire and then go and get 99 smithing. So th- right. thieving, fire making, smithing. I'm here for it. I don't have any nearby. I do actually. I'm 875 K away from 99 mage, um, which I'll wow. probably just get by accident. Maybe, maybe I'll do it on stream. I don't know. I've been, smithing and rune crafting and killing zilly these last couple of hours holy shit did i do the inferno this week was that this past week like after we recorded last week's episode but before this one let's preface this with you didn't actually <laughs> you don't have an inferno no cape. no i didn't compl- <laughs> I, that would have been as part of my intro i would have said welcome back to xp waste where one of us has an infernal cape and the other one can sit the f- down that would have been how i opened this week's episode no, I made it to wave 46, which was huge for me. Um, yeah. For the longest time, I was like, the Inferno's going to be so hard. It's going to be such a long and difficult process to like learn the waves, like actually make any progress. And then I think that was like my second attempt. That was because I think I've been in the Inferno three times. Once for the music track in full meme gear, and no one told me how the blobs work, and I died on wave four. <laughs> um, it was like right after I finished my fire cape, too. So I had all the supplies left over. From like a Jad run. Uh, my second attempt was just recently when I went in with my Fedora on and made it to wave 12. And then the third attempt, we were just like hanging out in Discord and you know, everyone was just chilling. Uh, too fast, the guy we talk about, I feel like every week at this point. Every uh, week. The Inferno, you know, connoisseur that the man is. Hey, too fast. If you're listening right now, message me on Discord with the word banana. Just to see if you're actually listening. Because we literally talk about you every week. That's weird. Anyways. He, Do you have a better <laughs> word, Oxy? No. No, I don't. Message me with the word inferno. <laughs> Infernal banana. 
<laughs> no, he uh, he's he's very good at the Inferno. Has all the Grandmaster stones, so he was kind of like coaching me how to do it wave by wave. Um, it just sort of came up randomly. We we're talking about combat achievements, and I was like, "Yeah, I need to kill a major for the Elite Diary." And he and our other friend Ralph were like, "Oh, just jump in the Inferno and see what happens." And then I like look over. There's like nine people in Discord watching my stream. I'm like, "Who the hell are all you people? Where'd you all come from?" Like I knew who <laughs> everybody was, but I was like, "I've drawn quite a crowd," and I wasn't expecting that. But yeah, wave 46, big big confidence boost, making it that far. It's obviously not like the 50s or whatever, where you've got the ranger, the melee, or the major, and the blobs and all that. Uh, and mm-hmm. I haven't seen any variation of Jad yet, uh, let alone Zuck. So I have a long way to go, but getting that far was like oh this is possible for sure and right. i still don't have full crystal so when i get full crystal armor it's also going to be a big help for yeah. for doing the dips with the bofa <laughs> would you would you ever consider taking a tebow loan like not having to save up to buy the tebow but like getting a loan from somebody to to attempt it i i don't i don't know I mean, I got loaned a lot, or I got offered a lot of things. I was getting my first fire cape. Like, I think one of our buddies offered me, like, absolute max everything. Max range, mm-hmm. Tebow, dragon arrows, everything. Um, and I told him no, and I probably would tell people no again. Because, like, all I would have to do is send a message and be like, can anyone loan me this gear list to attempt the Inferno? And yeah. somebody would loan it to me. Yeah, Not that sure. I would like take their take their shit, but I, I just don't think I want to do it with a loan. We were, we were actually just talking about this yesterday. Uh, I think a little bit after you left that I am a bit nuts when it comes to stuff like that. I mm-hmm. don't like to take loans because it makes it feel like I didn't actually achieve anything. Like I want to, I want to be able to do it myself. Um, mm-hmm. instead of like having to rely on somebody else to get it done, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. When when I killed Zolra for the first time, I had people offering me twisted bows, you know, all the stuff to like make it better and easier for me to kill Zolra because they couldn't stand the fact that I was dying like thirty times in a row. Um, <laughs> but I did. That was I. I didn't. Hard to watch. I didn't take it. I I did it. I killed Zolra all by myself. And the second KC, I texted our friend Ralph and was like, so how about that twisted bow? Because I was over it. I had gotten my achievement and I hated that snake. So I just wanted to kill it. Quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't think I would take a T-bow loan. I might take some things on loan. Like if I'm short, like 70 mil, like Jamie's offered me a Kodai like 90 times to do the Inferno with. She's like, borrow my Kodai for the week and practice the Inferno. Uh, yeah. That's a loan I might take because the Kodai doesn't change too much um it just frees up an inventory space that's mm-hmm. the only reason why the i want a code yeah it's the only reason why i want a code to begin with is to free up that inventory slot um but like a twisted bow that's a game changer dude that is right you're hitting big on zuck you're hitting big on the majors it's potentially the difference between completing it and not completing it yeah i think the- in some in some uh, attempt yeah the twisted bow is a bit of a tipping point for me so i think i have to save money like a lot of money to get the full crystal armor fully charge it up uh buy the supplies probably buy a code i want and then uh, then i'll have everything to send the inferno you know i'm not going to take an alley or anything like that in with me right i mean if too fast can do it with just the bow fared in him, i think we all have a chance but He's an elite gamer, so yeah. Uh yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to that. Like I said, big confidence booster. I don't think anything else notable happened in game this week at all. Like update wise? I mean they announced some new Steam client stuff. Did that stuff already come out, the Steam client stuff? Like did they Yeah. Okay, so that was the Yeah, this it came last out update. last week. Yeah, this was this last update, yeah. I do wanna talk briefly about some things that happened over this week not with us, but with other members of the community related to the Steam client. If you're on Reddit or you're on Twitter, there was recently a, an Ultimate Iron Man who was hacked for three bill because he used the Steam client. So just a word of warning to you out there. If you're going to use the Steam client, I wouldn't be too vocal about it. Um, 
just in the sense that the only reason he really was targeted was because he had sent a Reddit post that was like, hey, I'm really enjoying the Steam client, and he was a streamer. What had happened was, allegedly, they were able to brute force his Steam account via contacting support to disable two-factor authentication. They somehow acquired the information needed to, to fake being him. So long story short, Steam, just take, like, take it with a grain of salt. If you're going to be safe and you're not going to like, have yourself out on the internet, you're probably fine. But it's not as secure because it's not... I mean, Jagex does a really good job at stopping people from like... I don't know. Like you can't, you can't just pretend to be somebody else. They know. Yeah, but but they Steam doesn't really respond know. to anyone. Ooh, that was cold. Yeah. That was too mean. <laughs> that was too mean. <laughs> you can't fake being someone else when customer support doesn't answer anyone. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know that I'll be on the Steam client just because we're... You and I are kind of out in the public. That that almost in, in that definitely ruins the challenge I had for next week. I was going to be like, Michael, here's what we're going to do with the release of all these new client feature updates. We're going to give it a try because, like, I think one of the updates was like tile markers or something, and that's a big one for learning content mm-hmm. is being able to mark tiles. Uh, so I was going to be yeah. like, oh my god, let's spend the next week and give like our full Steam client review and see what we think. No thanks, not anymore. I'm I'm gonna Google how to unlink a Steam account from my RuneScape account <laughs> because do woo, it. That's horrifying. Oh, seventy-eight yeah. crafting. Nice. Congrats. So what you could do, and what we could do, is essentially just not link our main accounts to the client and do a review that way. But there's no chance I'm ever going to link. Not ever, but there's no chance right now that I'm going to link my steam like my runescape account yeah that's not with all the stuff that's been happening that's a that's a big l and like i think another big one they released is draw distance like they're actually allowing runescape to be more fully rendered beyond like the single chunk it has been for the last 20 years or whatever uh and that's that's awesome and now i i'm disappointed i won't be able to to use it because As you know, Michael, I am a hyper paranoid bitch when it comes to my account security. So, yeah, rest in peace, Steam client. I'm I'm probably never (laughs) going to play you. Awesome. Yeah, Uh, I'll just wait for all of the the stuff that they're working on through Steam to actually come to the vanilla client and through mobile, because I think that's probably where a majority of people are going to experience the changes that they have. It's via mobile. And it's just a matter of time. It's like, it'll be here soon. It's just a matter of them implementing it and testing it through Steam. I wonder how they're going to do like, like tile markers on mobile. Like, I wonder how they're going to do. Oh, cause you have to shift or you have to shift and then click. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, how are they going to do that? How are they? We could pull up the blog post and see exactly what they changed. But like, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of things like about rune light in particular, right? Because that's let's be real, that's what they're basing these changes off of is rune light and its plugins. Uh there's a lot of things that, like how do you integrate that into mobile? Like how do you integrate an XP tracker? How do you integrate a loot tracker, a calculator? How do you integrate that into a client without having you exit the game and go somewhere else? You know? I, I don't know. Question. Yeah, I have no idea. I'm just glad that we don't have to make that decision because i have no idea <laughs> that's why i'm not a you can't deal with these problems developer. can't deal with these problems if you can't code a video game <laughs> <laughs> that's above my pay grade hell yeah so yeah that's 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 my worry for this week and it kind of sucks three bills a lot of gp but um now you've the more you know you've been informed yeah, and you also know that michael and i don't have a topic for next week's episode right now because that was it, baby. Not anymore. Woo. We'll talk about this. Will be the title for next week: How to teach your newborn. Uh, uh no. <laughs> um, teaching your newborn to RuneCraft. A life experience. I don't know. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's not gonna be me. Like, if you watch on YouTube, I'm not gonna be in the box. It'll just be a camera on Michael's child, just sitting there while Michael's <laughs> like, "Hey, no, no, no! Click the essence." 
and click the altar. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Now use your ring of duel. Like, don't forget to cast magic imbue. <laughs> so cute. Kid, kid can't even like, t- like click the mouse, and you're like, you're you're losing me ticks here, buddy. Come on. He literally can't fart on his own, and I'm gonna have him rune crafting. Wow. That's the quote of the week right there. God, the joys of being a parent. <laughs> Yeah, you knew it was important to burp a baby. You didn't know it was important to fart your baby. I'm not joking. I, oh, thank God I don't have actual children right now. That would be, we're not prepared. Anyways, <laughs> so drama with the Steam client aside, we actually have a main title content piece. Yeah. Yeah, right? That's what they're called. Um, that isn't, <laughs> that isn't as dramatic and isn't as like oh, they what I I like I said I'm super excited for for this week's main title content. Michael, what are we talking about this week? I mean, to put it into words, we're talking about the mid game, the mid game, baby, the <laughs> mid game. We never really talked about like we said, hey, this is what we want to do, but never really like this is how we're going to structure it, but oh, you, and that, pff, you guys, this wouldn't be XP Ways, ways podcast. <laughs> having a structure for your content. XP on, ways. <laughs> so, so the, we want to talk about the mid game because Michael and I have kind of realized that over the last several weeks, this will be episode number twenty four, I believe. Uh, we talk a shitload about end game content. I just went off about the Inferno. We talk about Chambers of Zarek. Michael's on the road to Max. I bitch about the Theater of Blood every other week. <laughs> and a lot of the people who have reached out to us, and a lot of people who have contacted us either through Discord or Instagram or TikTok or anything like that, are, are not always at that same level. Don't get me wrong. Michael and I suck. We just had access to more money to, to give us like buying skills and things like that. Like, I'm pretty certain I was talking to I was talking to Scape last night. I think but mostly him. I was going to say between the two of you, I think it was mostly Scape bought me construction for like no reason. Back in the days when we had the the mod pay happening. Yeah, so we wanted to kind of break down the mid game and what we've learned is like what goals not goals you should have or things you should do. We don't want to tell you how to play the game, but like Right. Here are suggestions that will further the growth of your account. Michael, do you want to go first? Because I, I saw the list you sent me earlier, completely forgot to respond, but had almost uh, all the exact <laughs> same things. Okay. Okay. So we can go. I guess you want to go in the order that I had sent them. Uh, you can you via could text? hit with whatever. I Yeah, sure. Well, let, <laughs> let's get this one out of the way because this Oxy is going to talk you guys ear off on this one. But um, It's probably better you take it then, yeah questing literally the most important thing you can do in this game to achieve a successful mid game is get your quests done i was trying to think about earlier whether or not i think that quest cape is a mid game uh, achievement that you can shoot for because if you've been around runescape in the last couple of years they have definitely put out some end game quests notably Dragon Slayer 2, Song of the Elves, and Monkey Madness 2. I would, I would also say A Kingdom Divided is somewhat endgame. Some of the bosses are more difficult, but it's definitely doable mid-game, I think. So the top three off the table, yes, questing is your quest cape is definitely doable mid-game. There's tons of things within quests that are going to get you untradeables, and very, very useful things for your account. Uh, The seed pod, that's a definite, something that I take for granted almost on a daily basis. And Monkey Madness 2 is, like I said, it's, it's it's up into the top tier of quests, but it's definitely doable on a lower tier account. Um, So yeah, questing. Lower tier, lower tier is in lower level and not. Sub 100 combat. Yeah. I would argue that the quest cape is the end of the mid game. Once you have your quest cape and uh, like possibly your fire cape, you're you're kind of out of the mid game assuming you've kind of done all the other stuff that you and I have talked about. The quest cape is lit. And I'm I'll try to keep this brief and I'll try to 
make it more objective <laughs> than the whole can i can i give one more just thought before you go into that you just said the quest cape is like end of mid game and that's that sums it up perfectly because once you get your quest cape you unlock all of the stuff that starts the end game so you unlock vorkath you unlock the gauntlet you unlock demonic gorillas like it really is the jumping point the jumping off point for the end game all right go ahead now that Wait, michael here. has said the point that i was going to say mm. word for word uh no sorry. smooth brother one more thing before you continue here's the point F- you no I'm- <laughs> oh <laughs> You're. I'm sorry. No, but but yeah, that was yeah, that was smooth. We're keeping it in too. Uh, that was. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, quest quest good. If you like the lore, it's fun to know what the hell is happening around you. Do your quests. That's about that's about all I have left to say about that one. Um, I I'm just gonna jump right into a, the most controversial one. Oh my god. Slim Shady over here can't keep his hat together. We were going to go the entire episode without mentioning the fact that Michael put a hat on. Because, literally, this man, you know, has has fixed his hair probably 40 times. We got in the recording booth thing at 6.30, and it's 7.45, and we're only 20 minutes into recording. So now, now, that, now that the quest point for me had been... Had been cut off by michael i'm just gonna get into the most controversial one money doesn't matter i'm i'm just gonna go ahead and say it stop stop trying to make money to stop it stop it you're not gonna be able to afford bandos you're not gonna be able to afford a player owned house you're not gonna be able to afford to buy any 99s stop it stop trying to make money you'll make money along the way but when you're in the mid game, like the thick of the mid game, you got early 70s combat, you got 50 Slayer, you got maybe 45 Prayer, because obviously Prayer is a little bit more expensive. You're not going to want to save money for gear and things. You don't, you don't want to do that. You want to save your money for skills. You want to save your money to buy items that you'll need for quests buy your buy your big three your your trifecta of pvm your abyssal whip your toxic blowpipe and your toxic trident that's what you're going to want to save money on you know you're going to want to save money so you can have a nest egg for construction and herb lore and crafting so you can get your quest cape money does not matter you will right money making like money yeah. making methods money making so. yeah it doesn't it doesn't matter cuz in the mid game, you can't you can't kill Zalra sixty times an hour in the mid game. You can't do it. You're not sending tobs on a mid game account. You're not doing things that make a lot of. And this, and this is what's challenging about that is because a lot of the people around you might be making a shitload of money. Like when I was in the mid game, one of our friends, Immortal, was going for his Hydra pet. And he was getting like two, three, four, five thousand Hydra Casey. And he was just rolling in the dough the entire time that I had you know, first started to get to know him. Um, and it's a little intimidating when you're like, I'm just learning how to do barrows. And this guy just got a 75 mil drop for like two minutes worth of work. Like, why am I bothering to do this? I so demotivating. I <laughs> still don't have a 95 Slayer. Like... Getting to that end game point, it takes a long time. You know, it takes a long time to get there. So if you're around a bunch of people who do a lot of high end content and are constantly talking about how much money making there or how much money they are making doing PVM, don't try to put yourself on that level. You're not going to make any money doing PVM. You're going to get experience, which is very important and very valuable, but you're not gonna be making money slayer does not make you money until when do you get is it is it 70 because you get you get like cuirass at 70 you get skeletal wyverns at like 72 yeah other than like that early 70s maybe early 80s is real money i i 
would say the with 70s. Like, ne- neck reels and blood velds and blood velds don't demons. make you shit, dude. I love blood velds. They're such a good task, but blood velds do not make you any money unless you get like a superior unique. Like blood velds don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, the ones in the catacombs do, I guess, a little bit. They'll give you the blood rune drops. I will admit, the blood rune drops are nice. Um, but, like, Slayer in particular? Slayer is is not a moneymaker. Slayer is a, a necessary support skill. It is a moneymaker over time. You know, when you get into Thermi, Hydra, even Sire, you know, they are money-making bosses. Um... Don't try to focus on making mills and mills and bills of GP in the mid-game. It's not gonna happen. Focus on the other goals that we have and probably will lay out. Which kind of segues into the next one that you brought up, Michael. I really like this point, the the goal setting. Yes, goal setting is very important. And I I mean, I go, I go through so many different sort of iterations of my goals. And I have gone through so many for like the last three or four years of playing this game. And it's really the only thing that has kept me going at the pace that I'm going now is, is like hardcore goal setting. We have a channel dedicated to goals in the TNL Discord. If you're in the Discord, check it out. Post your goals. We want to know because we want to be able to support you. But some, some, early, some early easy goals to get out of the way are Barrow's Gloves, and that's going to set you up account-wise so that you have a good number of quests done. And then to round it out, it's not a bad idea just to set yourself like a base level goal. So in the beginning, you go for like base 20 stats, bump it up to base 50s, base 60s. If you can hit base, I think it's base 80s with a couple 99s, that's pretty much 2K total. And for some people... 2k total is a huge goal to get to that's around the point where you're nearing the end of the mid game in my opinion is when you get around 2k total so if you're wanting to get either into the mid game or out of the mid game set yourself some goals for instance uh i think for me i was probably still in the mid game until either mid last year or start of this year when I really started going for maxing and a little bit more serious PVM. But one of the big goals that I had set for myself was the achievement diary cape. A lot of that stuff is sort of end game as far as like 95 fletching, 91 fishing. I'm not saying you have to be in the 90s in a skill to be in the end game, but it takes a long time. And uh, once I did that, it really catapulted me into this mindset that I can max one day. I set this goal for myself. I achieved it. I can do other things. So, and it feels good. It feels good to celebrate it. Again, we have the RuneScape goals channel. We have a levels and achievement channel. We just like to celebrate with people. So if you're in the TNL discord and hit us up in there, let us know what your goals are. Yeah. And that's, that's a really good point. I love the, the base level goal is huge. I mean, Mm -hmm. again, Base 80s is a bit more, you're out of the mid game where you're going for base 80s, 2k total, things like that. Um, But base 50s, oh my god, base 50s took me 90 years, almost (laughs) as long as it took me to get to base 60s, because the 50s blues, as I call it, is the worst possible time period of an account. There Mm -hmm. are, in my opinion, zero good training methods. Yeah, for most of agree. the skills like agreed the ones that have good training methods are expensive as hell like yeah what level do you get mahogany tables 70 something uh, i don't yeah i was gonna say i don't even know what level you oak, get the oak larders are probably your 50s yeah oak, but oak st- stuff but that's expensive for an account that's mid 50s herb lore you get like do you get uh, anti-fires or ranging po- you get something in the mid 50s that can move you along pretty decently it's hella expensive um arty knights uh, oh my god i'm gonna get sick just thinking about arty knights at 55 thieving it's disgusting so getting past that hump and getting to base 60s that's oh that's beautiful total level goals are absolutely <laughs> beautiful i'm working towards yeah. base 80s right now 
And holy shit, I'm actually really close. I only need mining, hunter, and runecrafting. Would you look Ooh. at that? Anyways, uh, I, 10 out of 10, total level goals are really good. Also... I had another point. I, Go ahead. I was gonna... I'm cutting you off for this point here. <laughs> you mentioned you mentioned diaries uh, as an achievement. Yeah. Like, end game. Like, get a diary cape. Mid game, go for your hard diaries. Holy shit. You get a lot really of good big. things from your hard diaries. We have people who are doing barrows right now. Um, which I really miss the days where, like, you're just grinding barrows over and over again. Because, like, barrows is a bit of a money maker. Like, barrows kind of is a really good introduction to bossing that can make you a little cash here and there um yeah i mean and more importantly what it gets is it you the runes i think that you carol's carol's skirt is a couple mil carol's skirt's like 200k carol's top you carol's want top the top two, half of carl mil. that's when that's where all the money's at um carl carol i don't know carl's? i just call oh. i call him carl because i can't stand him uh <laughs> but uh, I lost my train of thought. What? Runes. Oh, yeah. Barrows, in addition to making money, you get runes and things like that. Uh, I actually had a pretty fat blood rune stack until my dumbass decided a sang was a good investment. Um, uh, that's why I'm blood rune crafting as we're recording, because, whoa, <laughs> I am poor and I need blood runes for anything. <laughs> um, so, yeah, keep keep that in mind. But hard diaries, like the Mauritania hard diary, gives you those extra runes. So you make more money, or you can have more runes for training, notably for training magic. Like, mm -hmm. I, I always tell people not to sell your runes from Barrows, because you're going to need them for tasks anyway. You know, you're, you're right. not, you don't have Ice Barrage yet in the mid-game, but you will someday. You'll have the, you'll need to, like, cast it someday. You need magic for quest boss, you need magic for... Just training in general, teleports are nice. So um, that's an example of a hard diary reward that like I pushed hard for because that agility level sucks trying to get that agility <laughs> level. Mainly because you're you're going to find this surprising. 50s agility is, is horrible. The Falador rooftop course is my least favorite course in the whole game. I hate it. Yeah. I hate that's it. why so many people stay at Canifus from 40 to 60. It's horrible. I did 50 to 60 at Falador and nobody told me how bad it was. I think you're the only one who's ever done that. I, to be honest Honestly, with you. I might and learn from my mistakes. Go train Just somewhere else. stay at Canifus. Stay at Canifus. <laughs> You'll get the marks of grace you need for graceful. Uh, that's that's it. But more importantly, like I said, hard diaries are a big focus of mid getting into end game content because there's nothing that's really like extortionate in the hard diaries. Like the elite they're diaries, really not. like okay, ninety six fishing to bare hand to shark. Okay, Jagax, sure. Um, but like other than I'm trying to think of the hard diaries off the top of my head. The 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 Slayer Tower climb was tough. Um if you have no PVM experience, uh Scorpia can be a bitch for the wilderness diary. Uh oh, gotcha. And the chompy birds are annoying as hell. But <laughs> otherwise, I don't think there's any Oh, and crafting a death rune. Getting the uh, the rune crafting level for a death rune is was difficult. Um, mm -hmm. that's because in the underground pass, you'll oh. you'll find this to be you're gonna find this shocking. Rune crafting in your fifties sucks balls. It's yeah. horrible. <laughs> but guys, if you're in the fifties right now, if you're in your levels, if you're base level fifties right now, just know you will. It'll be better soon. Yeah, it it gets better. You will get out of the fifties. I promise. <laughs> If there's one thing you take away from this episode for me is that you will get out of the 50s. God, I don't miss the mid 50s crime. <laughs> uh, we, there's, there's, I mentioned graceful. There's lots of things you need. I'm still heated about the 50s. Michael, talk about untradeable. <laughs> so I kind of put together of a, a, of a tiny list of mid game untradeables that really every account should have. And that is a torso, a defender. What's a torso? 
fighter's torso. So let's go into this. So fighter's torso is a reward from the Barbarian Assault minigame. It's actually called the F- Penance Fighter something. Penance Fighter's Torso, I think. That's the game name. The word on the street is it's called a torso. But it is, it's like the single best uh, chest armor before you get to Bandos. And arguably, some people are like, it's not even that much worse than Bandos, which is crazy. Because it's a tier 45 defense item. But very, very important to unlock uh, for the mid game. You pair that bad boy with some Barrow's legs or some dragon legs. You're, you're sporting the best, the best that you can get. Uh, even like if you don't want to get your tacits, or sorry, even if you don't want to get your Bando's chest plate first and you pair that bad boy with some tacits, that's a good, a good strategy. So torso next on the list is your dragon defender. It's a great offhand. Um, you know more about the, the, stats and stuff but like it's just good to have it's a offensive shield type thing i would say is my best explanation of that but both the dragon defender and the fighter torso have the opportunity to increase your max hit when doing melee uh so if you can hit a 20 if you have a fighter torso and a dragon defender you can hit a 22 for an example for example that's how strength bonus works uh makes you hit harder um the more you know. Yeah. I would argue that the Dragon Defender... The Dragon Defender is not as good as, as the Avernic, in my opinion. The Avernic's also $45 million, so that's not a mid-game item. Don't worry about the Avernic. Go get the Dragon Defender and kill all the Cyclopses. It's a delightful, delightful upgrade, a Dragon Defender. However, the Fighter Torso is... Uh, uh, the upgrading to a Bando's chest plate is like stupid at sometimes because yeah. the fighter torso <clears throat> only has one less strength bonus. And please, somebody correct me who actually has the stats in front of them. I'm pretty sure the fighter torso has better defensive bonuses than the Bando's chest plate. I'm I'm not sure if they're not better. They're damn near the same thing. Right. Um, Howdy, XP Wasters. I'm editing this episode the day it releases, specifically for the audio listeners. The Fighter Torso has about half the defensive stats of the Bando's chest plate, but it has an equal strength bonus. So the stats are different, but the strength bonus is exactly the same. So you get the exact same max hit, regardless of which piece of, like, chest armor you are wearing. Um, I just needed to correct myself, because holy shit, was I wrong when recording. I had the right idea that they're similar, but I wasn't sure how. So before you flame in the comments, uh, yeah, Th- this is specifically for audio listeners. I've put a correction up on the screen for YouTube, but cool. Back to your regularly scheduled XP wasting. The torso can literally carry you, like I said, to and through the end game. Yeah, it you're gonna is. get looked at pretty weird in some instances, but don't let them just dis- don't let them distract the you. The fighter torso is the reason that, like, if you're selling items to buy something, a twisted bow, a bofa, Kodai, scythe, it's why the bandos chest plate's one of the first things to go because you have an untradeable bandos chest plate. No, it's not the same thing. The strength bonus is less. The defensive stats are not the same. I get it. It's not the same, <laughs> but it's. For all intents and purposes, it's basically the same thing when you have no money or you're trying to sell things in your bank to do an item rebuild or you're investing in a skill. Like, you're like, I just want to make overloads and raids. F*** it. I'm going to buy 90 herb lore. Sell mm-hmm. your Bandos chest plate. Don't take financial advice from me. Please don't. It's just an example <laughs> of how key some of these untradeable combat items can be. The Dragon Defender, if you're like an Iron Man, for example... The Dragon Defender can carry you through till you max if you don't get an Avernic. The Dragon Defender is a very good offhand. Like, yeah. don't... It's much better than the Rune Defender. If you're sitting on a Rune Defender, please go get a Dragon Defender. If you don't have any Defenders, please get into the Warrior's Guild and get a Defender. 65 attack, 65 strength. That'll get you in. Yeah. Something like that. I think it's like a combination 130 between the two. Mm-hmm. So 65, 65 is the most common. But you could do something stupid and get like 99, 20, 41, 99, 41. Will that be the proper math? No. 
Yeah, no, 9931. We'll get you in. Oxy, we're doing math again. Yeah, I, li I like math. <laughs> Arithmetic is easy. I'm not good at it, but I like it. <laughs> Anyways. So, uh, Defender, good. Torso, good. Uh, the next one I had on my list was Iben Staff. This one is often overlooked because of the trident, but it is, it's definitely an item you don't want to sleep on just for the sheer fact that you have access to it at, at a somewhat lower level. It's been a long, long, long time since I've ever used an Ivan staff. I do remember completing the underground pass and being really excited to unlock a really good offensive magic staff that casts Ivan's Blast. And if you've ever gone to Barrows, there's tons and tons of people using Ivan's Blast. And it's very effective. You can pay a little bit more money to have charges added to it, which I recommend doing that. I don't know what the base is. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've used it, but uh, definitely a worthy upgrade if you can afford it. The next one, we already kind of talked about this, but, but, but getting graceful can be a, a game changer. Literally, change the game, how you play it. We're for questing, just overall skilling. It's one of the first things I did after I got 99 fire making on my Iron Man was I went to Cannabis and I got my Graceful actually pretty early. I think I, I got it by from level 40 when I got to Cannabis. I got Graceful by level 54. So it's very much doable. And it's going to change, like I said, it's going to change how you play the game because oftentimes you don't always have access to stamina potions. They can be expensive or you're an Iron Man and you can't make them yet. So having that, the, the weight reducing effect of Graceful is uh, really nice for quests. In, in addition to the untradeable grinds, I'm going to throw diary gear in there as well. Diary gear from, like we said, completing easy, medium, hard, elite diaries is huge. Like, you get free teleports daily with... Uh, just talking about the hard diaries, right? Because, like, that's kind of... That's, like, a really good mid-game goal is to finish all the hard diaries. Uh, you know, and, and side note here, we're talking mid-game, and we're also... But at the same time, we're talking, like, you know getting base 60s, base 70s, we're talking about finishing the hard diaries, we're talking about, you know, breaking into higher level skilling or higher level PVM methods, things like that. The mid-game in RuneScape is, is really weird how it's defined, because, you know, you're, you're getting up there when you're 80, 90 combat, something like that, but you're not quite ready to get into, like, the, the, the hard, difficult endgame, whatever it is, content in OSRS. Mm -hmm. So... If you're sitting there with base 60s thinking, like, I'm not in the mid-game, you're probably in the mid-game. I, quite frankly, for, for reference, I think I think I pushed myself out of the mid-game or into, like, the super end game, out of the late game, whatever it is, a little early at times. Um, because on one hand, like I said, I got to wave 46 in the Inferno, and that's awesome. On the other hand, I have like 76 hunter and just do not give a shit about leveling that skill up i just i can't bring myself to do it i can't bring myself to mine i can't bring myself to like oh for the longest time it took me a million years to get bones to peaches which is the other <laughs> worst grind of a hard diary like yeah. it took me forever to do that i had theater of blood kc before i did uh the bones to peaches grind like Wow. It was it was horrible. Wow. <laughs> it was so bad. So I think I push myself and like define myself in the end game sometimes a bit earlier than I should. Um mm -hmm. cuz like I'm not max combat. I don't have, you know, KCs at every bosses, every boss things like that. Um so if you're considering yourself more of a late game player, you may or may not be may or may not be incorrect in saying that this little tangent was pretty much just to you know help help people understand that like there's nothing wrong with being in the mid game this game is very strange how it yeah how people and the game doesn't even define it which is interesting the community is what defines early mid late end game mm -hmm. progress you know mm -hmm. would you would you agree well, that like we're more responsible yeah. for that than i was going to say i I understand completely what you're saying as far as you kind of feeling like you're, you're stuck between two game modes as far as mid and late. 
Because you totally can be. You can be end game for PVM, but really early game for skilling <laughs> or questing. <laughs> and we have people like that in our community. There's literally people who do not have Barrow's gloves, but can kill certain monsters thousands and thousands of times. Not calling anybody out saying they're, they're bad, but it's literally a product of this game and how it's made that you choose your own adventure. You can literally be focusing on just combat or just skilling, and you can kind of toe the line between different end game, mid game, early game, all at the same time. So if you're looking at your account right now and you're looking at your stats and say, feasibly, you could be maxed, 100% maxed, and not have a quest cape. Would you call them mid game or end game? Both. I don't know. That's my opinion. So, sorry about that little the little hands up like stop there. Uh someone's car alarm is going off outside my apartment. I thought it was mine. It's it's not mine. Uh so we're we're fine. Hopefully whoever's car is getting car alarmed. Hopefully it was like a butt dial for a car. You know you Uh-oh. do that, you like reach your hand <laughs> in your pocket to grab your phone and you hit like yeah. the, like alert thing on your car. The or, panic button. or you like you go to hit unlock and you're just like used to muscle memory, but it's like somebody else's key. I do that to my mom's car all the time. I'll go to hit the unlock button where like mine is on my little key fob. Uh huh. And I will set my mother's car's panic mode off almost every time I'm at home. It's, it's great fun. Really. It is. Oxy, stop setting off my car alone. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> I love your mom doesn't call you Oxy. My mom doesn't call me Oxy. My mom also doesn't have that Linda Belcher accent. I think <laughs> I think people associate that accent more with me and the di- like oh my god, I do that all the time. Nobody in my family Oxy. talks nobody in my family talks like that. We're all very Midwest. We were talking about it last night. I have a very Axie. thick Midwestern Michigan accent. To, to to build on that, when I was a kid, up until the age of like seventeen Nobody told me um, the thing that <laughs> determines how loud something is is pronounced volume, not valium. I called it valium till I was like a senior in high school. And I had people being like, are you on drugs? I'm like, no, dude, just turn up the valium. I can't hear anything. <laughs> I was. It's a combination of having a thick accent and just being a stupid, stupid teenager. So. <laughs> Anyways, no one in my family has that accent. But yeah, I love that. You really can ride the line between between game modes for for a long time. And if you're riding that line right now, even between early and mid game, you know, people people who play and consume RuneScape content. This is a hot take are very obsessed with the idea of being as good, if not better, than the people around them. Um, Hmm. And this can apply to, like, any situation when it comes to, like, RuneScape and RuneScape media. You know, you'll... You watch people on YouTube, and you see them grind for hours. And what's the first thing you think? Oh, I have a higher level than them in that. Awesome. You'll see someone, I I do it, it happens to me all the time on stream. People will show up and be like, what are your stats? It's like the first thing they ask. They're like, hey, what's up? Show stats, please. Show stats. Show stats. Like, like, what what do you want from me? I'm making wines in the clan hall waiting for the (laughs) update. Like, I don't, what do you mean, show stats? Um, So, it's okay to kind of compare yourself to other people to, like, it's okay to compare yourself if you're setting a goal. It's uh-huh. it's very dangerous to compare yourself and when you're n- inevitably not as good as somebody else because it's gonna happen. It's yeah. not good to either A, get super demotivated by it, or B, try to force yourself to do something you're not capable of. You know, Michael, you, for the longest time, wanted to get, was it 90? Or 95 Slayer, something like that. 95. Yeah, and you wanted to throw yourself off a bridge by the time that was over. So I don't think that was about you comparing yourself to others. I think it was more like, I want to have this done for like this diary goal or get this boss Mm -hmm. unlocked or whatever. Um, But if you focus too much on what other people are doing, 
you focus too much on what you know the other people in your discord or your clan or the people you follow on twitter are capable of doing when you're not capable of doing it and you try to force yourself to be able to you're gonna have a really bad time because yep. you're gonna force yep. yourself to train slayer you're gonna force yourself to not skill and do quests because you've been convinced you need to make money to buy all this really good gear you're gonna you know i, I don't know so if you're a mid-game player just take it slow that's the best advice i can give your mid-game take it slow and do what you gotta do to get Solid out of advice. the mid-game don't force yourself into where you think you should be because holy yeah. shit this game takes a long time oh my god <laughs> on the on the flip side to all of that literally if you're stuck in that mindset of i can't do this because somebody else is doing it better than me or i shouldn't go for that because somebody else is doing it already and we're at the same level or whatever try your hardest to turn that feeling into motivation so many times I see people on YouTube who, and, and we reference YouTube a lot because like RuneScape as a game there's a has a lot of, of content creators. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot Streaming of Streaming content. So when you're watching somebody on YouTube or you're, you're looking at us and you're saying, wow, those guys, Michael just got 99 smithing this week. You don't know always what the situation looked like on their if end. You're using us as a template for good players. <laughs> Woo! You got to buff, you got to buff your standards a little bit, <laughs> but yeah, no, sorry. Keep the going. point I'm trying to make is <laughs> <laughs> the point I'm trying to make here is if you are constantly like jealous or demotivated, try and turn that into motivation to, to go for those goals and know that you can do it. It just might not look the same. Like you may not just take the same route. If you're in the point I was trying to make again with the content creators is that's literally their full time job. So when I see somebody like Mudkip, who is nearly maxed on an ultimate Iron Man in one of the hardest game modes to complete, it sometimes will demotivate me to say, I will never max a normal account because I just don't have the time. But you can play a couple hours a day. I can play at least a couple hours a day. And that's all it takes. If you're logged in, you can be training. It's kind of my the my mindset when I get demotivated. It's like you can do it. Yeah, it's just gonna look different. You also got to recognize that some of the people who are who have accounts at your same level know the game a hell of a lot better than you do. You know, you'll see people like they'll make fresh Iron Men or they'll make fresh PKing accounts, and within two weeks they'll have Barrows clubs, and it'll yeah. be ridiculous. But that's probably like their fifteenth account build. One thing I don't see very often, particularly on Twitter or YouTube, is not a lot of people post legitimate first-time progress. It usually is, hey, look at me, I just got the Tob pet. Hey, look at me, I just beat my PB in the Inferno. Hey, look at me, I'm on an Ultimate Iron Man and I'm going for an Inferno Max Cape or something like that. It is mm -hmm. really end game impressive stuff that they've never done before, but they have an idea of how to do it. You know, you're not often going to hear stories or you're not often going to see Twitter posts that are like, why didn't anybody tell me you need to wear God items in the God Wars dungeon? Like I got my ass cheeks clapped by by the monsters down there you know why did nobody tell me falador is the single worst rooftop in the game and why did i spend <laughs> so much time there when i was going for my mauritania heart diary like you know you don't see that very often so it's it's hard to resonate with the idea that like i have no clue how to play this game you know but n none of us have any clue on how to play the game even like super stuff that we now find is like super simple used to be extremely difficult. Jad is not a hard boss to kill. You sit there, you click the boss, and you flick between one of two different prayers. And occasionally you click somewhere else for healers. Jad is, as far as PVM and OSRS goes, one of the most simple bosses to kill. That shit had me shaking in my boots the first time I got to Jad. 
It is hard when you do it the first time. This is a difficult game to learn and a difficult game to master. So Mm -hmm. that mid-game portion where you know some things really well, but you don't know much about anything else is awkward when you see people doing something that you've been doing super efficiently and it's not. Like, I cut you logs to get to 70-something magic. I don't even remember what it was. I don't know why I was cutting so many U-logs, and I was <laughs> banking them. And someone after the fact is like, why didn't you just cut teaks? I'm like, because teaks aren't close to a bank. They're like, drop them, dumbass. What do you mean, bank them? I'm like, what do you mean, drop your logs? It seems like a waste. I don't do that <laughs> anymore. I've trained wood cutting at teaks <laughs> since, I've, since I've learned about that method. Um... It's okay to not know what's happening and be in that mid game or be in that in between mid to late or early to mid period for a long time. This went from like goals that you should have to like motivation for mid game players. <laughs> and I'm liking it even more than what we had originally planned. I I really would stake money on the fact that probably eighty percent of our listeners are in the mid game right now. We have so many stories of people who DM us saying, I've been out of RuneScape for five years. I found your podcast and now I'm back in the game. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to the game. Welcome to the mid game. (laughs) Yeah. Because there's a good chance you quit because you got burned out and that can definitely happen while in the mid game. Oh yeah. I would think the, the mid game and the end game are the two places that you burn out the most. Cause in the late game, like the early game, it's all new early game. It's new. It's different. It's exciting, but you only get to experience the early game once. You truly only get the early game experience. You can make every account in the world and you will never get that early game experience back. So if you're in the early game right now, live it up because live it up. It doesn't, it's you're soon. You're going to be like, wow, look at all these trout I'm catching. And then you're three ticking on mobile. So brace yourself. Mm -hmm. Mother. The early game goes quick. Literally Oxy. (laughs) I I'm, I'm almost in tears. Like, (laughs) <laughs> thinking about my childhood <laughs> and the fact that I can never have that. Never, I can't talk about this right oh my now. God. Mike, we're going to go to the BRB screen. Michael's got to weep for a minute. But anyway, the late game is the here's the, the upside to that. The late game is your new early game because the late game, you get to learn how to play RuneScape again, but it's not the same RuneScape you first learned how to play. You're not <laughs> learning that like, like, why is, there a, why is there a forge in one city, but an anvil in the other? This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I can't afford <laughs> law runes. You want, I have to walk between Falador? This game sucks. It's, it goes from that to, like, what do you mean the Ohm has a firewall? This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Why is Zalra over there now? It's... Those questions and that learning experience come back in the late game when you're yeah. getting into bossing and you're getting into high level skilling and like, you know, you get your first rhythm with three tick fishing or, you know, three tick chins and you get your first like four kill Vorkath trip. When you get those things for the first time in the late game, it feels real good. The end game, the end game, you can get stonewalled pretty quick by like yeah. infernal cape uh maxing combat for me it's the theater of blood i ask scape scape and i cannot do theater of blood together he and i individually i would say are both pretty good pvmers and we can do a lot of content together and do pretty well the Mm -hmm. minute him and i even consider tob verzik is like that'll be 400k for your wipes like up front like we can't do tob together (laughs) that is my end game wall i'm hitting right now is that stupid encounter the mid game. You want to hear mine? Uh, what, what's, what's yours right now? Hit hit me with your, your gauntlet. Game. Gauntlet. I can't. I'm having so much trouble with gauntlet. Dude, gauntlet's two, hard. <laughs> two completions in like 25 or 30 attempts. It is so frustrating. Gauntlet is hard. Gauntlet is difficult content for sure. I think I normal gauntlet too, bro. <laughs> well, like, it's not even corrupted. <laughs> so that's the thing about about PVM. You know, briefly before we get back into like how mid game can burn you out, like. PVM is a cumulative learning experience. So if Gauntlet is the first time you've ever encountered a boss with multiple attacks, environmental risks, places you literally cannot walk or you'll be insta-killed, uh, it's, it's difficult. 
when I first went into TOB in leagues too, like I said, I died immediately in P2 because like I was not ready for crabs and tornadoes and bouncing. I wasn't ready for that. Chambers of Zarek has the environmental stuff too. You know how many raids I got killed by the crystals when I was first learning? It was like an embarrassing, it was like 30 times in a row (laughs) I died to crystals in like all those different raids. It was like an embarrassing amount of time that like I just didn't see the environmental changes. The gauntlet is riddled with those. Um, Mm -hmm. But since I had experience doing a shitload of other bossing in the game before going into gauntlet, gauntlet wasn't as hard. It definitely helps. You know, like if you, the reason they call um, Zalra has a Jad phase, the reason it's called the Jad phase is because you switch back and forth between two different prayers, just like you did in Jad. Like PVM is a cumulative experience. So if you've never experienced anything like Gauntlet before, Gauntlet is hard. Just like every other and mechanic that you'll find is difficult the first time you, you get there. So keep it up. You'll eventually beat the Gauntlet. Um, Mid game can definitely be burnout because if it wasn't abundantly clear by all of Michael and I's talking about it, the mid game sucks sometimes. Oh my yeah. god. It's horrible. And looking back, it's not even that bad. Like <laughs> it's horrible in the moment sometimes, for sure. Yeah. Cause you like you you feel like you can hit a wall with you're at the cusp of your your skill level, you think, and you've been asked to go on a raid and you're so nervous and it's gonna take two hours. But once you do that. Once you get your first raid KC, you add confidence for the next one and the next one and the next one. So it's just like it takes time and it can sometimes take money and it's money you don't always have. But no, that's going to come in the late game and in the, in the, in, in that kind of stuff. Oh so. my God, you said money you don't always have. Hold on. I got to take a second. I'm going to see if I can find it because I was so I have this notebook here that I originally intended to use for classes. Um, but class went online and school is meaningless, so I've used it as a RuneScape goal and YouTube content creation uh, notebook. It's actually where I write all, this, uh, all the scripts for our little ads and things that we do. Um, One day, Oxy, that thing's going to be worth money. <laughs> I'm sure it will be. You'll find all my notes about ethics for four pages, and then you'll find um, just RuneScape stuff. There's a page in here somewhere about how much it would cost me to do Song of the Elves. Because Song huh. of the Elves has, like, construction requirements, it has herb lore requirements, it has, mm. um... God, what's another big Base, one? There's, Crafting like, a lot of skills that you need level 70 in yeah. for Song of the Elves. I, I had a big issue because, like, I can't afford construction. I can't afford... Uh, oh my god, this is it right here. Holy shit. Yeah. Found it. Right, right here. I needed, um, I needed fifty six to seventy smithing, and I needed to buy ninety five hundred uh, pieces of gold ore or whatever it was. Um, mm-hmm. At the time, gold ore was two hundred and eighteen GP a piece. It would have cost me two mil. That's nothing to me right now. <laughs> Give me ten minutes at Venonatus and I can come home with two mil. You're gonna. It's you're gonna look. <laughs> that is literally. I, you're gonna look back at your notebook and literally, it's gonna be the meme of like, why were you even worried? I I because I, I here's my original plan. My original plan was that I was gonna craft air orbs. I was gonna do molten glass because it was cheap enough at the time. Make orbs and then craft them into air orbs in edgeville and i was gonna do that uh let me see here 7900 times so i would make 10 mil or whatever and at the bottom it just says negative eight it was like an eight mil loss no at the top here if we want to complete song of the elves we lose 9.1 mil because construction would have been very expensive for me at the time i gained 10 mil for the skill of the week prize pool and i think like 20 hours and just because i was just doing dog shit pvm because like zalra doesn't make you money anymore but i got yeah. lucky with like a tanzanite fang and like an abyssal whip and things like that these concerns that suck in the mid game 
don't mean any like I don't want to say they don't mean anything. You're gonna wonder why you were ever worried about it when you get yeah. later into the game. So if you look on Runelight and it says you need to thieve thirteen hundred more Arty Knights to get the level for Dragon Slayer two, just do it, my guy. Just just do it. Because it's a it's a return on investment it, for the late game. It is. And it's it's terrible. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's gonna be terrible. <laughs> Super energies was how I did Herblore from 55 to 70, apparently. That cost me wow. 4 mil. I don't have any idea how the hell I was able to afford these things. Because I bought a Trident somewhere in here, too, because I was terrified of Seren, so I figured I would buy a Trident <laughs> in the swamp. So, I don't know how the hell I managed to, to afford all this, but it came... That was, like, months in, in the... That was, like, a, a three-month plan. Like, I didn't finish Song of the wow. Elves until my birthday. I think I made that in, like, May. Like, that That's... took me forever to get there when I was in the mid It's respectable, game. dude. Literally cool, though. Like, it's you set a goal, and you did it. Back to our first point. Exactly. Set a goal, and you did it. Set a goal, and you do it. And it's hard. If you're coming off of that burnout grind, just do it. It's shitty advice from a therapist, but, like, just do it. Dude, you're gonna, you're gonna be so happy once it's done. Yeah. So there's a lot of things we could probably, we could talk your ear off permanent another couple of hours. Yeah. And maybe we'll do a part two to this episode someday. Yeah. Um, talking about maybe the late game. Yeah. Cause we've gotten off track. The game mode we're in. Yeah. <laughs> we've gotten off track a bit from like, here are tips for the mid game into like, you can do this. You can just do this. We're like weeping on camera. <laughs> I'm crying over here so, about the early game. Exactly. Not going to think about that tonight. Exactly. Oh, you're going to think about that tonight. You're going to be in bed. Your wife is going to be like, I wonder what he's so upset about. You're like, I just want to tan hides, man. She's going to be like, okay. Like, um. Ooh. This is going to be fun because I, I literally think the closest we're going to get to experiencing the early game again is group Iron Man mode. And I am pumped for that. that that's going to be fun only because we're going to do it poorly probably on yeah. purpose yeah <laughs> like our, our group iron man's gonna be a shit show can't wait to talk about it Woo. but guys yeah we're gonna send you to commercial break now but um yeah you can do it you can do it <laughs> get out of the mid game or or take your time getting out of the mid game i had a point i said there's i said if you take one thing away from this episode it's this and I already forgot what that was, so just rewind no. until I say that. I'm, yeah. you know what? Better, I'm editing this week's episode, so right now, right below me. So realistically, it'll be. Am I looking on camera? Right. It'll be over here in, in like the middle of the screen on YouTube. I'll put my quote above the words "XP waste" in a YouTube version. And for audio listeners, I'm sorry. Go watch the YouTube version too. Why are you watching timestamp in the description? I don't know. <laughs> That's you're getting ahead of yourself there. Watch both versions. We'll see you guys in a little bit. How you doing, you bastards? My name's Fortunato. I work out at Draenor Village. I saw the best wine in the whole damn continent. Not not in Draenor, not in Mistelin, not in Gilinor, the whole world. I sell the best wine in the whole damn world. People tell you, you know, you can buy wine for cheaper on the Grand Exchange, they lie to you. That's juice. That's juice. The best wine, the best wine comes from me. Huh? The pirates, they buy my wine. Them them freaks with the hats over there in Zia, they buy my wine. Okay? You gotta come over here, you gotta buy my wine. At Fortunato's, we, we don't waste nothing. Very rarely do I have wine that go off because it's so good it's always flying off the shelves. When it do go off though, the vinegar, we're gonna sell that too. I hear there's some old man just east of Iraq or something like that. He wants vinegar. I don't care why. In this business, you don't ask no questions. You're hearing this ad, you're thinking to yourself, you're like, oh, I got some buddies who make wine, I could do that too. You wanna be a tough guy? Huh? You wanna be a tough guy? Make your own wine? Try to outsell Fortunato? Yeah, sure, whatever. I, I dare you. I dare you to outsell me. In fact, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a head start, okay? Come over to my place, I'll sell you some jugs. They can be full of water, they can be empty, I don't care. Not even your girlfriend at the Grand Exchange has better jugs than me. I get these bitches by the gross. I'll sell you as many as you want. You can make all the wine that you want. It's not gonna be better than me. Come swing by Draenor Village, swing by my wine stand, have a good drink, and leave feeling good, okay? 
I promise you, you're not gonna find any better wine anywhere else. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that commercial because I know I sure did. This is it's that it's that time of the podcast where things things get fun. The the questions get way more fun than Michael and I weeping about the early game. But before we do that, God, I hope that didn't peak the microphone. <laughs> um, it, it's Patreon time. This is the first full week where we've had a Patreon live and we've gotten remarkable support uh so much so that everyone who has subscribed is getting a shout out and that's uh, huge for us because we expected a total of zero subscribers for ever and you guys have already come <laughs> through in in the first week that's incredible so shout out to rune riot jordy and Spartan Fire, who uses your full name on uh, on Patreon, so I'm not going to say that out loud, but you know who you are. <laughs> Shout out to you guys for for your absolutely insane generosity in the first week of having the Patreon up. Um, I yeah, means a lot. Shout out to Jordy, who is here with us in the recording booth. That's one of the that's one of the perks of the Wise Old Man tier or higher is that you get to be here with us watch us record it and you have access to the recording booth chat where we've been going back and forth with him. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's been, Shout out to the wise old man. Yeah. It, uh, like, like we said, the support has been remarkable. Thank you, darlings. We really do appreciate it. Michael is banned from talking about the wise old man. One of the fun questions we got in the fun question section of like the XP waste corner of discord was you can have any NPC be your stepdad who would it be um and i told michael no i said i already know who you're gonna pick so like it's not even worth doing a fun question for he's like how'd you know i'm like how'd i not know the wise old man would be michael's stepdaddy you failed to think that i would choose the uh the drunken dwarf as my my stepdad <laughs> You wouldn't. I, I didn't. You're full I of wouldn't. Shit. Um... You're full of shit. He absolutely <laughs> would never have chosen anybody else over over the wise old man. Yep. So that's not 100%. our fun question for this week. Sorry, it's TMD. Not. That fun question didn't make the cut because the entire listener base answered it before Michael had a chance to. Yeah. Answered um... it for Michael, rather. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to be labeled as the guy who is like a simp for the wise old man. Too late. But there is a reason why tier three is the wise old man tier. <laughs> when we were talking about names, I'm like, what about like Zolra or Jad? He's like, hear me out. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> classic, rune uh, classic RuneScape NPCs. He has to be on there. Yeah. But it's a fun question and that's not it but what is the fun question oxy we do have a question that's fun every week god see consistency is what keeps us popular am i right um this question comes in from one of our patreon supporters we just shouted out jordy uh they ask what other skilling boss should or could be added to the game the examples that we have are like winter todd zolcano and temporos all three mm -hmm. of those bosses uh uniquely enough like implement all different kinds of skills in the encounters like winter todd you have fire making fletching construction wood cutting herb lore temporos is cooking fishing construction and then zalcano you get a shitload of stuff you get you get rune crafting mining smithing all sorts of all that jazz there's also hespori which is more of like a boss boss than anything else it's not like yeah it's not a group activity but but yeah, that's that's kind of like where we're at with, you know, like how we're trying to conceptualize a new skilling boss. So as always, we've taken literally zero time to think about this beforehand. Uh, so Michael hit me with it. Or do you want me to go first? Which one do you want? I can, I can go first. So I saw this on Twitter within the last couple of weeks, and I think it would be really, really cool to have a hunter skilling boss, some sort of mega mega like mega huge chinchampa or something that you could take a group of people and there would be various traps that you would have to set and at the end you'd have to slay the beast or whatever 
in RS3, they kind of have this already. I think they have that exact iteration where it's like a giant Jinchampa. But I think it would be a really, really cool addition to old school to kind of liven up Hunter in a sense that you're not doing thousands of hours of herbivore and you're not just setting box traps from 65 or whatever to 99. You could have some variation for a low level all the way into that could carry you to feasibly 99. Um, don't ask me for ideas because I have none other than I just want a, a hunter skilling boss. That's the second time you've taken something that I was going to say this week. But, no! but <laughs> I, I thankfully do have a backup. Uh, that okay. said, a giant Kebet, like a Kebet Saurus, would be cool mm-hmm. as hell uh, to like hunt and track down. I can imagine you would use like herb lore and like fire making to like smoke it out of its hole or whatever. Mm. And then at the very end, you all kind of use whatever shit you made to kill it. Um, mm-hmm. That said, I, I thankfully did have a backup. Now, this would of course have to be in line with how long it takes to actually train this skill to be kind of competitive, but this is the most difficult skill to determine hourly XP. A Slayer mini game. Hear me out. You ever played yeah. Nazi zombies? Yeah. Of course you have. Imagine a zombies style mini game that combines like the fight caves with barbarian assault. And you need to take on wave after wave of slayer related enemies until you get mm-hmm. the final slayer boss at the end. Perhaps the new perhaps that's how we get our aberrant specter boss, for example. Uh and you go in with like three other friends and you have to do all sorts of stuff. You have to use crafting and construction to make traps. You have to use mining to create like barricades and like, you know, like blow out rocks, funny enough, like mine so it's like unstable to like crush enemies. Uh mm-hmm. obviously you have to use combat make it a safe mini game so anybody can do it give it a little bit of slayer xp the xp is the most difficult part of that right and then i would kind of also like to see in line with like winter todd and temporos temporos that's the name a crate system actually no cuz i'm thinking about it a little bit more what do you use in a slayer crate nothing right like you don't use anything it's not like it would just be like it would be skilling supplies and that would be kind of broken. Yeah, so it would have to be. I would prefer to have it more like Zalcano's drop table, where everybody gets a drop and there's like an MVP. And there's a chance mm. to get like the pet that way, or there's a chance to get, you know, an item that way. But it's not it's it's a mini game boss thing, but you have to go through like five or ten waves of like progressively more difficult enemies you know Mm -hmm. and like it's nothing to like you know maybe they're just a different difficulty as opposed to getting more difficult so like maybe in in arc for example in in arc survival evolve they have missions on some of the new maps where you fight through this like gauntlet style whatever and you fight wave after wave of enemy but one of the themes of the mission is it takes you through all the different maps on arc so you're on the island you're on scorched earth you're on aberration and all the dinosaurs and creatures from that map come out maybe they could do it region locked where like the first wave is mauritania the second wave is oh. you know mistalin asgarnia the you know the third wave is tyranwin and zalandra where like you'll have to fight what? i don't even know what lives there maybe that's a terrible region but like <laughs> you know they have uh where's another good slayer cave Kandoran has a really good slayer cave you know? Fremenic. Fremenic, that's another great one so like they could have different waves based on the regions like that could be really cool and at the very oh, end dude. the very end you get a unique slayer boss like i said i think an aberrant specter boss would be super cool because they are a mid-game slayer monster that you fight that can make you some kind of money but only if you do it really slowly in the catacombs of Karend. don't do that that's what i did <laughs> don't do that uh and you have an herb sack yeah herb sack is big for aberrant specters but i think that could be fun you fight through five or ten waves and at the very end you fight this like final boss and yeah. if you kill the final boss everybody gets a drop maybe like two or three rolls of a drop table or something like that mm-hmm. 
you know i think it, i i really like the way that destiny as a game handles raids where it, you're not just stuck to one raid and that's it and like every time like every week they highlight a different raid that is like the raid of the week so it'd be cool to have it kind of like on a rotation system and or just have it to where you can access different types of raids oxy's got something to say i gotta um, keep, keep going <laughs> i'll keep it okay so it's just like where you can access different types like you said with the slayer caves you have a specific you have a specific type of raid in that cave but it's different it's not just the same cookie cutter same rooms different like recolor them it's actually different content and i think that that actually would be a lot of fun keep, what were you gonna say keep the wave structure and possibly order the same don't make it super variable change the room layout where the supplies uh -huh. and the traps are have like 10 different iterations of what the room could look like a lot how chambers is eric has different like layouts of the exact same room mm -hmm. Um, and then make it like one of three random bosses that like you oh. don't know what's going to happen. So like oh. you, you effectively have to bring tribrid gear in because you don't know what boss you're going to get at the end. It's not like chambers where you can scout it. You just have to yeah. go in and like face the waves as they come out and you're like randomly generated quote unquote, um, I guess randomly rotated room. Mm -hmm. like off a list of set rotations and then there's a like a one in three chance to get the the uh, aberrant specter boss a one in three chance to get i don't know uh a skeletal wyvern boss or a one in three wow. chance to get i don't a what's a what's boss. in a we already have a hellhound boss <laughs> i know um, i know <laughs> i think a bloodveld boss would be fun that'd be cool that's also two from mauritania though with the aberrant specters so mm. if you wanted to do something different maybe you could do like uh, a cockatrice sort of, boss yeah oh yeah some sort of demon would be cool like a like a not necessarily like a scotizo type demon but there's plenty of demons within the lore of runescape that they could incorporate yeah maybe one of zamrock's minions we could actually now... get a basilisk boss that's not a basilisk. That'd be cool. I mean, it's a bit redundant with basilisk knights but like they all uh -huh. share the same drop table right so it's not like one is like one has the item you want. It's not like Araxi and RS3 oh, where like no, they no, drop no. the legs and the spines and all that shit. But like they have the that same drop cool, table. Though. But but like you know how much people would bitch about that? No, dude. I think it would be actually really cool if they had different drop tables and you had the RNG of going to the end and not knowing what you were gonna uh, get. Same drop table, <laughs> each one has one different unique on it. Yes, that that's either what I'm creates saying. a weapon or gives you a weapon that is like so let's say for um i don't know let's say for the aberrant specter one you have to use magic because they have like mm -hmm. a low magic level or something like that uh and you bring barrages and tridents and shit like that and you get a new um a necklace upgrade like you know tmd talked about an occult sink and like why is that not a thing because like the best in slot magic necklace is like 200k <sighs> Right. You know, you could do, there's all sorts of stuff you could do with that. That'd be so fun. That'd be super yeah. complex. And again, the biggest issue of making it a skilling boss isn't that Slayer isn't a skill that people don't already train. Because, like, everyone trains every skill. It's how do you get the XP? How do you get an mm -hmm. XP output oh. that's worth it from, yeah. from Slayer? Because Slayer is one of the slowest skills in the game. Without yeah. quite, it's one of the, people love it because it makes you money. But it's debatably the slowest skill in the entire game. Yeah, everybody do. complains about runecrafting, but uh, Slayer's been, a lot slower. I've been straight vibing with runecrafting for the last two hours. Zero complaints. I have a Commander Zeliana task right now. So <laughs> I, which one is going to be a bit more stressful for me? <laughs> so I, I think that'd be a lot of fun. Oh my god, a rotating random boss with... Oh, that'd be so cool. <laughs> Jagex, if you're listening, because we know you are listening, feel free to take this content and implement it we won't charge you for it oh my god you have to bring tribrid gear for every single encounter so you have to bring like your chambers is eric setup right yeah you gotta bring you know maybe there'll be an undead wave you gotta bring a pickaxe you gotta bring a salve you gotta bring you know food and things you gotta they would 100 percent have to make it to where you couldn't scout it because 
that was, I mean, that was the whole idea behind the Chambers of Eric's is like, you just are prepared for whatever comes your way. But people got, <laughs> I mean, Runelight just totally blew that out of the water to the point where now Jagus implemented raid scouting into their client. So they really would just have to make it to where it's undetectable until you literally open the door. Yeah. And then you're, you know what it is. Maybe they could make like the room layout detectable. So like, you know how when you go into Barbarian Assault, uh, you all start in the same spot. Uh-huh. Maybe it could be something like that where you start, you know, you start to walk in and you get the confirmation of like, would you like to begin the waves with the party that you have? And you can have like up to four people or whatever. Five. So group Iron Man isn't like, oh yeah. <laughs> nerfed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, you can, if you say no, you walk out and you get another randomized room or whatever. Or maybe the rooms rotate every hour, implement that new system to OSRS. It'd be cool. You know, or every like week. That. It could be weekly changes. It, it like, could be. I don't want to like, get into like wow. weekly scape, but yeah. yeah. There's plenty of other game mechanics that are just fine that they could port into RuneScape. Yeah, like it, it could, it could make it like really exciting too. Like if there's one really op room layout where like the spawns and the traps are really close to each other that like that activity is like rushed for that whole week uh-huh. and then the next week yeah. it's something like why are the traps over here or like it's such a pain in the ass to have to run to like cut the trees in the room to fletch into the boards to put up on the whatever just like you would in like a zombie style mini game um yeah because again, it can't just be Slayer. It's got to implement all the different skills. It would have to. I think trap building would be fun. I think making your own healing potions to like use on each other would be a lot of fun. It would be like a. It would be like a mini Chambers of Zarek. But people would almost say, "Well, why not just implement dungeoneering? Like that sounds somewhat like you, it would be fun in a in a dungeoneering sense." But I don't think that I don't think that old school needs dungeoneering. I don't think There's it's plenty like, of things. I don't have it that, in mind you know, as like a dungeoneering thing. I have it in mind as like fight caves, but with longer time between the wave. Like you get a minute between each wave to prepare. You know, like yeah. you get a minute to oh. like okay, here we have some stuff in our little like community chest where like feasibly three people can kill all the monsters and one person can get all the like all the logs and the ores you need because before wave five you have to make like ballista arrows or something so someone can sit on like a mounted turret like you do in barbarian assault and like fire at enemies to make it easier for you guys i really am i'm not thinking about it in the sense of like you need to progress through rooms or like do oh, skilling activities to complete. I, I I'm saying what you implement mean. skilling to make your time against the monsters that are coming to kill you easier. Because all wave based games have perks. They're literally called perks in in zombies. You like buy them from the vending machines or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know. Huh. I think something like that would be super cool. Would it pass? I'm really not sure because do we need another Slayer training method? Uh, we absolutely do not. Do we need more items that could potentially cripple the economy and bring power creep in? We absolutely do not. Do RuneScape players enjoy mini games anymore? No, we don't. When's the <laughs> last time you've hit up the boys and been like, let's go to Castle Wars, everyone? No, that's not what we do anymore. You only go there because you're obligated. Not Castle some, Wars. Like, there's only. A, what? I yeah. mean, you're. Ob- mini games. You only go to mini games be- out of obligation. Oh, yeah. Like 100%. we talked about earlier. You only go to Barbarian Assault because you need your torso. Or level five it's and not all like rolls. <laughs> diaries. And yes, there's like goals you're trying to, to yeah, achieve. You're not going to Barbarian Assault for fun. That's that's literally it. So I don't like, is it feasible for old school right now? I don't know. Would it pass? I don't know. Would it be cool as fuck? Yes. Yes. Yes, it would be. <laughs> oh, man. Jordy, that was a great question. Thank you. That was a Thank lot you, of fun. That was a shitload of fun. <laughs> Yeah, I'm way too excited about that. But. <laughs> if you guys want to get in on the fun of uh, offering us fun questions, literally the Gnome Child tier unlocks it within the TNL Discord. You also have access to XP Waste giveaways, which we haven't done yet. I'm not sure like the timeline for that. Oh, it's 100% but... because Michael and I don't have, don't have money to give away right now, but we will yeah. because we do. But it, I'm, it, doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be old school stuff. Like It can be um, like old school runescape creators like there's plenty of people out there beanies customs there's a a a chick on twitter called witchy and she makes plushies like i'm not i'm imagining more than just like in-game stuff for that channel so keep your eyes peeled 
gnome child or greater as far as the actual (laughs) uh, as far as the tier to access those channels and you'll have access to give us your fun question ideas and if you aren't in the patreon we're not saying you can't just dm us we're not saying you can't leave a comment we're not we're not going to be so elitist to think oh it's not in our patreon we're not going to take the fun question please don't hear that and think that we're some sort of like uh some sort of elitist podcast no like if you want to send us a fun question send us a fun question but we have a dedicated channel this is what i'm trying to get at i'll stop before it just sounds so terrible you're you're killing it michael I think this is my favorite part of the episode where I have to do the social media plug. So, you guys know what to do. The links to all of our socials will be in the description because we've started doing that now. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, I think that's it. We'll also have a link to the Patreon in there as well. Um, again, it's not mandatory. Don't feel like you can't just like shoot us messages. My private chat's never going to be turned on in-game, but you can join our clan as a guest. Um, and talk to us there also dm on social media still waiting for tiktok suggestions by the way i just put one up before we started recording that i (laughs) i i thought was really funny but i'm not sure if any if it if it caught on to anybody else um yeah i've got a couple tiktoks in the backlog to to post soon yeah it's it's gonna be fun like like we say we use we usually try to post videos from our podcast as well uh so I don't think I missed anything, promotionally speaking, anyways. All good here. We'll be live. I'll be live on Twitch. Whether or not Michael's live is probably determined on his actual child, uh, as opposed to yeah. anything yeah. else. But <laughs> if you want to hang out with us off of off podcast, no, the podcast <laughs> isn't live. Stop by our Twitch channels or join the TNL Discord, because we sit in general chat at least probably three to five nights a week at like a bare minute like if it's a if it's hype if something really awesome is going on like escape brought it up again we probably have a bingo coming up at the end of september and escape has a an idea for it that he hasn't told me about yet so we'll there there's things coming up in tnl come hang out with us there hang out with us on twitch dm us on any platform um, count how many times I repeat myself plugging social media because <laughs> I'm still not very good at it. <laughs> like and subscribe on YouTube. Leave a review on Apple Music. Um, print out a QR code of our show for Spotify and stick it on a light post. I'm not going to actually promote that because I'm pretty certain that's like public vandalism or something. Don't do that. But here's what you do. You make a bumper sticker of our show's QR code and say, stick like, it on have somebody a else's bumper. There we go. Listen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Don't do I'm going to say, put it on don't, your own car. Don't do that. But. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I think that's all we have for you guys this week. So I will sit up in my chair. Like I don't look like a slouching idiot to wish you all good day. We'll, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>